I'm glad there were some folks that braved the snowpocalypse 2024. You made it. You made it. Look at somebody and congratulate them for getting out of bed, for getting out of their comfort zone. I'm glad y'all did that because if not, I'd be here all by myself. My computer is frozen. So that's fine. I've already preached this message once. I can do it again. I want you to turn your Bibles, if you will, to Exodus chapter 19. I, I believe I've got a word from the Lord that God is sharing with us. How many of y'all know that sometimes life, life, sometimes life is hard. Sometimes life will just punch you right in the face. And that's why we've got to be moving forward in our spiritual life because when life comes along, and listen, listen, in a, in a, in a room with this many people in it, a little thinner today than I thought that we would be, but thanks for coming. If you're watching online, God bless you while you're having your waffles. <laughs> I'm just glad you're tuning in with us. I'm glad you're here. Glad you're with me. But here's what I can tell you. I know this for a fact. If everything's going great in your world right now, praise God. Bless the Lord. Thank him right now. Because sometimes life will just come along and it will punch you right in the face. And when life does that, what you have to do is you have to be grounded in the Word of God. You, need to, you can't put faith on your credit card. I didn't say that this morning in the first service. I just, that just kind of came to me. you got to be doing some things in your life that grounds you in the Word. So when life comes along, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? When life comes along and slides up in your driveway, you'll need to have something in you that you can stand on. And how many of you know you can stand on the Word? How many of you know you can trust God? You can trust His Word. If faith, we need faith for moments when we need faith. That was deep. You didn't catch that. We need faith for those moments when life comes along. Turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 19. We're going to find out how to continue taking spiritual steps on this journey that we're all on. Last week, we, we, we took a step together. How many of y'all remember, if you were here last week, we actually took a physical step together. We took a physical step forward. And what that was, all that was, was to say together, as a house, as, as a family of God, we're taking a spiritual step forward. We're committing to say, we want to move forward spiritually. And we did that together last week. How many of y'all, you took that step with me? How many of you ready to take another step? That's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn how to do that in Exodus chapter 19. Let's read this. When Look at verse 2, verse 2, starting in verse 2. When they set out from Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. And there Israel camped in front of the mountain. I'm glad I'm not camping today. It would be cold out there to camp. But for context, they were in the wilderness. They were in the desert. It wasn't, it wasn't nine degrees uh, in the desert. Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the sons of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Now, just so you understand, they've come out of slavery, out of bondage. Now they're coming out in, into this area in which they would be going to the promised land. Everybody say they're going to the promised land. They're going to the promised They're not in the promised land. They're going to the promised land. How many of you, you're going to somewhere? We're all taking a journey. We all have to go through some stuff to get where we're going. Amen? This is where we are. You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on wings, eagle's wings, and brought you to myself. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. That's important right there. All the earth is his. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. Verse 7. For Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words which the Lord had commanded him. And the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will come to you in a thick cloud, 
so that the people may hear when I speak with you and may also believe in you forever. Then Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. The Lord also said to Moses, go to the people, consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments, and let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Skip down to verse 17. A lot of scripture today, but it has some relevance. How many of y'all, you enjoy the word of God? We don't, we don't shy away from the word of God here at Harvest Time. Verse 17. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for speaking to us today. Lord, we didn't, we didn't get out in 10 degree weather just to play games today. We want to hear from you. We, we come expecting to hear from the Lord today. Lord, we want to move forward in our spiritual walk, in our spiritual journey. Lord, I want to move closer to you. I want to experience your refreshing. I want to experience what you have for me personally, Lord. And I also want what you have for this church. I pray, Father, a blessing over your people today. I pray, God, that you would minister by your spirit. I pray, Father, that we would all be in one accord, taking steps closer to you. In Jesus' name, Amen and amen. Now, as I was preaching in the, in the first service, I received a word that uh, uh, some friends of ours, and it goes to our church, Greg Kohler, his, uh, one of his daughters, their, their, their house burned to the ground. And so, y'all be in prayer for, for Greg and Wendy and their, and their family. Uh, everyone's fine. Even, even the pets made it out alive. Everybody's fine. But... Uh, it's, a, it's a total loss, according to Greg. I haven't even had a chance to talk to him, but he texted me that as I, as I was preaching. So uh, remember Greg and Wendy Kohler. Uh, if you don't think, if you got some problems, well, uh, sometimes perspective is good. So uh, let's pray for them, and then we'll, we'll come alongside. We'll, we'll, we'll do some, we're going to do something. You know, how many of y'all know church, church response? We're, we're the church. We are the church. We, we will respond. Amen? So y'all remember them in prayer. Uh, Greg, Wendy, if you're watching right now, God bless you. We're, we're, we're standing with you, and let us know how we can minister to you. Um, we started last week. I just wanted to say that because we're family. Amen? We're family. Last week, as we started this spiritual journey, how many of y'all know that when you start a journey, when you, when you say yes, you're going to do something. When you say yes to God, you can expect some opposition. That's just what the enemy does. He wants to steal from you. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to make sure that you're miserable. And when you start taking new spiritual ground, the enemy's going to come against you. And that's exactly what happened to several people here. To, uh, you, you, you decided that you was going to take a step spiritually last week, and then the enemy came against you. And so here's what I want you to understand. Some of you, you maybe weren't here with us last week, or maybe you didn't catch it online, but here's what I want to do. I want to give you a recap, and how many of y'all believe that I can give you four points in a recap because this is a continuation of a message from last week? How many believe I can give you four points in two minutes? Now, that not very, Evan, my son-in-law, he says, no, you can't do it. Set, set your watch, son. We're going to do it right now. All right, two minutes from right now. Here's my four points from last week. Four points in two minutes. Don't be discouraged because you have not yet arrived. That was point number one because here's what I need you to understand. Your present situation is not a reflection of God's future destination. How many of you have ever set, off, uh, set out to go somewhere and you had, uh, you had a problem along the way? The Rogers had that problem this morning. Their vehicle broke down on the way. They had to call a tow truck and they still made it to church. Just because you're not where you think you should be, don't quit the journey. Don't stop the journey because your present situation is not exactly what God has for you for the future. I can tell you that for sure. Number two, forget your past. Now, in the first service, I just felt prompted to say this, and I know y'all are all super spiritual. First crowd, they're not spiritual people, okay? But, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it in case there's a, you know, there's a first crowd person in the, in the group. Listen, forget your past, yes, but if you have some things that you need to go make right, if you offended somebody or you, there's some things you need to go back and work on and fix, that does not excuse you. You leave your sacrifice at the altar. Go make some things right before you come to worship. 
But forget the things that you had no control over. Everybody's got a will. And I can't, listen, sometimes when somebody exercises this will, their will, it affects you mightily. And there's some things that you can't control. Those are the things that I'm talking about. Forget your past. Forget those things that you have no control over and that you need to move forward in your life. Number three, press on and reach forward. You will never be successful in the future while you're looking in your rearview mirror. Keep pressing forward, reaching for what God has for you. And number four, mark your goal. Make some goals. Write it down. Habakkuk 2.2 says, write it down. Make it plain on where it is that you're going. What's God calling you to do? How would I do? Two minutes? Whew. Now, all of this growth, that was, that was four points from last week's message. I needed you to hear all those things because now we're about to take another step. Who's ready to take another step? Anybody with me? You ready to take another? There's 17 people ready to take another. Who's ready to take another spiritual step today? All right. No, we got, we, I've got the right crowd. All of this growth that we're doing, it's to prepare us for something. It's to prepare us to meet with God. It's to prepare for us to, to experience God in his newness and his refreshing of what he has for us. Because it, here's what I know. To experience God, you've got to prepare yourself. There's no casual Christians you have to be intentional to be a disciple. And so to become a follower of Jesus is what we're wanting to do. There's no casual disciples. Followers of Christ live differently. Thank you, Travis. Followers of Christ live differently. Just pausing for emphasis. Listen, pagans behave like pagans. People who do not follow Christ, that's how they live. Never be surprised when a pagan behaves like a pagan. But the problem that we have is sometimes it's hard to tell who the followers of Christ are because they behave. Mm, I'm starting to. Mm. We have some expectations of how we should be living our life. There's some things that we should be doing that's different than the world. We're a peculiar people, a chosen Today, we're going to look at the text from Exodus 19 to see what God was saying to them. The commands, the instructions of how to experience God. If I could give you 100% guarantee, how many of y'all like 100% guarantees? We, 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 we ordered something a few, few weeks ago that had 100% guarantee. And y'all, it did. It worked. It actually worked. It was wonderful. I didn't have to exercise the clause of the, of the guarantee because it worked. How many of y'all know if, if I could give you a 100% guarantee that your life will be exponentially different and exponentially better in 2025 if you do the things, these principles, if I could give you that, how many of you would take me up on it? Okay. Um, there's, there's a few people that are willing to do what the Bible tells us to do. I believe that everybody here, you didn't get out in 10 degree weather today to stay the way you came. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you the principles in which God's word says in Exodus 19 in order for you to move your life forward. Now, many people say they will. Many people hope that they will. Many people raise their hand. Many people take a step forward. Saying and hoping means nothing. But here's, here's something we need to remember. Decisions with actions is what moves our life forward. Decisions with actions is what moves your life forward. This spiritual growth plan that we're talking about, that we're all on this journey to move forward and do what God is calling us to do for this year, this all boils down to this. The reason why I gave you all four points is because I'm going to boil down those four points from last week down to one point. How many think I can do that? If you look at last week's four points, I'm going to boil all of it down to this is point number one for today. Make this, make this, write this down. Make a decision. All four points last week had to do with making a decision. Make a decision because following Christ, it starts with a decision. And we get this from when Jesus is calling the disciples in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus called his disciples. He called Peter. He called Andrew. He called James. And he called John. And he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And then the very next word in verse, verse number 20 
Verse 20 tells me everything that I need to know about their decision that they made. Jesus says, come and follow me. And the Bible says that the next word says, immediately, what did they do? They dropped their nets and they followed him. They made a decision and they put legs, they put actions on the decision that they made. And there's some people in the room today, you've made a decision and that's good. And now God is looking to see, are you going to put some action? Are you going to put some legs on what your decision said, on what you said you would do? The disciples, they had to drop their nets. They had to drop some things in order to follow Christ. They, they, were, they had to change their, even their profession had to change. They had to drop, I'm not telling you quit your job. If God tells you to quit your job, then you quit your job. But in order for them to follow Jesus, they had to put legs on it. They had to drop their nets. And Jesus put it in their language. He says, I know you're fishermen, but I'm going to make you fishers of men. So you may have to drop some things. They had to drop some people. They, they couldn't hang out with the people that they was hanging out with because now they're going wherever Jesus goes. When Jesus calls you to follow him, there could be some people that you might need to give less time to. There could be some people in your ear that have no spiritual fruit and you're starting to follow them rather than to follow Jesus. Is there anybody you can hear what I'm talking about today? Do you understand what I'm saying? You understand the words coming out of my mouth. <laughs> See, every smiling face is not your friend. And just because they're in your corner, that doesn't mean that they have your back. It doesn't mean that they have your best intentions. You're, 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 they might have the wrong motives. Maybe they're more comfortable you doing the things that they, that they want to do. Maybe that's what they're more comfortable with. It. And you know that you should be doing these things. If you're following people that have no spiritual fruit, you might need to assess who's in your close circle. I'm not telling you should leave anybody. I'm just saying, if they're taking you down the wrong path, you, in order to move spiritually forward, you might have to eliminate a voice or two. There's some habits or some dead weight holding you back. Maybe you've got, maybe those nets that Jesus was talking about, the dropping those nets, maybe there's some nets of habits that have you ensnared, that have you, uh, the, the net has you, and you, the, you can't get away from that. You could be some habits that you've got to leave in order to follow Christ. Now go back and listen to last week's message. If you, if you, was not here and you didn't hear the message last week, go back and get that because this is, this is going to help you to understand what I'm talking about today. A lot of people say they're going to go. A lot of people say that they will. A lot of people say they want to take a step forward. This, this, I love this old song. It says, I have decided to follow Jesus. Make a decision. There's no turning back. I've made a decision. I'm going to walk where Jesus wants me to walk. I'm going to do what he wants me to do. I'm going to be who he wants me to be, and I'm going to be his child, and I'm going to be a disciple. I'm not turning back. There is no turning back. It requires action, sacrifice to become a disciple. This brings me right straight back to our text of Exodus chapter 19. When we look at this, God was giving them some commandments. This is how I want you to live. This is how I want you to be. This is what I want you to do. And I believe the same things that God was saying to the children of Israel at the Mount, of Mount Sinai, at the, at, the, at the base of Mount Sinai, I believe God's telling us, this is what I want for you today. Here it is, 1A, <laughs> if you're taking notes, prepare yourself Look at verse 10. The Lord also said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today. And tomorrow, consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments, verse 11, and let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. All of us are busy. All of us are distracted. All of us have plenty to do. Is there anybody here that you need more to do? I don't see a hand. Anybody here, you don't have enough to do? Nobody. I knew that that would be the case, that we wouldn't have an abundance of hands. Because all of us are distracted, all of us are busy, we all have jobs, we all have families, we've, all, we, we, we've got things that we're going. How many of y'all know we're busy people? 
Am I by myself? Are we busy? Y'all can talk back to me today. It's just us, y'all. How many of you know we are a busy people? We got a lot going on in our world and a, a lot going on in, in and of ourselves. And people, God spoke right here. The, they were busy too. The, the, the children of Israel, they were busy. They all had their own lives. They all had their own things too. But this is what God was saying. He said, consecrate and prepare. Even wash your garments because I'm about to show up. How many of you know that washing your garments in the desert what was the greatest commodity? What was the most expensive or the greatest commodity in the desert? Water. They had to give up something that was very, very precious in order to meet with God. Now, I've got a question for you. What is the most precious commodity that we have? Time. Somebody said it right here. Time. I don't know who said it, but you're smart. Smart, Judy. Smart. The most precious commodity that we have, that we would say about today, is time. We say, we don't have enough time. I just said, is there anybody here you need more to do? Nobody lifted your hand. It's because, well, here's what we've done. We, we show up to church. We're ragged. We're worn out. Anybody understand ragged? You're worn out from the week. You're just trying to find two matching pairs of shoes for your children. Uh, listen, we've lived that. I know. I get it. I'm, I'm not beating anybody up. I'm just telling you, I understand what you're talking about. If I got matching socks on and matching shoes, I'm a happy man. But how many of y'all know that because we have got so many things in our life that we live like that over and over and over, and we say, God, if, if I just get there, will you please speak to me? And we haven't consecrated ourselves. We've not prepared ourselves because we're all so busy. We miss God. What the Bible is saying right here, prepare yourself to meet God. Prepare yourself that you are going to expect when you walk into this place that God is going to speak to you. Expect that and prepare yourself and be ready. We're about to experience God. We're about to experience and hear his very word. We're about to be in God's presence. And meeting with God is not common. Meeting with God is not casual. Meeting with the God of the universe that set the stars in place, that created you and me, that all of the earth belongs to him. It's all his when we're going to meet with him. How many of you know that's not common? Verse 11 says, let them be ready. The Lord will come down if they're ready. Prepare yourself. Be ready. God's going to come down. Let them be ready for the third day. Then for emphasis, for on the third day, the Lord will come down. They prepared literally for three days to meet with God, wash their garments, prepare day one. Day two, consecrate, set themselves apart. There's other, if you want to read the whole passage there, there's things that they needed to do. They set themselves apart. They consecrated themselves to meet with God. Meeting with God requires intentionality. Got a question for you. Is there anybody here you're willing to prepare to meet with God? Are you ready to meet with God? Because if you are, you will prepare. We prioritize what makes, what makes it on our calendar. Anything that makes it on my calendar means I've put enough time and thought and energy into something that I need to meet with this person. I met with some of you this week. Some of y'all called, you called Neely, and you said, I need to get on Pastor Darren's calendar. And so I put it on the calendar. Why? Because it's important. But here's what I can tell you. I left my phone down there on the front row on purpose. Thank the Lord. I should have had it for this moment, though. The phone is a major distraction to me. It's a distraction to me for intentionality with God. Now, here's what the phone does for me. The phone makes sure that whatever I prioritize that I do. So in other words, if I'm going to meet you for coffee, be thankful for my phone. It tells me you need to meet with so-and-so. It makes me on time for my appointments with the staff and the team. It makes me on time. I made it a, priori a priority to meet with you. Mark says, Pastor Jared, I need to meet with you. I put, it on my, I put it on my calendar, and then my phone goes off and says, in 15 minutes, I'm meeting with Mark. Now, that's great, and that's wonderful, but let me tell you something. Sometimes the phone gets in the way of me hearing from God. Because what I've done in a lot of times is I made you a priority rather than God as my priority. 
Did you know that when you go to the doctor, in other words, you've got something going on, you feel like something's not quite right, you call the doctor, you make an appointment, you put it on, you put it on your calendar, you write notes, you want to tell the doctor everything that's going on, you write notes, and what do you do when the day finally comes? You get three, four weeks out, you finally get to, the, get to go to the doctor, and you've got all your notes, you're prepared, what do you do? You take a shower. Why do you do that? Because you're putting an emphasis, you're putting a priority on the doctor. You want to find out what's going on. How many of you know when you go to the salon? Ladies, when you go to the salon, what do you do? You take a shower, you wash your hair three or four times, condition, 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 and then you go and see, uh, see your hairdresser. My dear mother, she had a lady that would come to her house once a month to clean her house. And y'all, she would clean the house before the lady showed up. She put a priority on the lady coming to clean her house Y'all, you know what I'm talking about right now. You know that everything that I'm telling you is the truth. But the reality is this. I place sometimes a priority on you. You place, place a priority on going to the doctor. You place a priority in going to the salon. You place a priority in going, and, and even you're the person that's going to come and clean your house. And that's fine. But my question to you today is, have you put a priority on meeting with God? Is God somewhere on your calendar? Have you made an appointment with God? Have you made an appointment to read his word? Have you made an appointment to say, God, I'm going to spend some moments in prayer? My question to you today is, have you squeezed God out of every moment of your day? We, we squeeze God out of every moment. Sometimes I have to, even my, my, my appointment schedule will be so packed, sometimes I have to make, make time, 15 minutes, just to respond to some texts, just to respond to some emails. And y'all, when it gets that packed for me, how many of you know I'm distracted? How many of you know that when it gets that distracting to me, what happens is I'm, I'm just, I'm in survival mode. How many of y'all, you ever been in survival mode? You know what I'm talking about. If you find yourself in survival mode day after day after day and you haven't spent time with God, you got to change something. you got to change your habits and you have to put a priority on meeting with God. God is saying to the children of Israel, you got to prepare yourself. You have to consecrate yourself. You have to wash your clothes. You have to get ready and put on your calendar, prioritize meeting with Him and spending some time in prayer. Life is full, but this is a wake-up call. For some people today, you've put a priority on everything else, but you've not made room for him. We come in this place, we say, I will make room for you. Do whatever you want to in those two minutes that I have at 7.15 on the way to work. Do whatever you want to. I will make room for you next week, Lord. How many of you know, I'm singing a song to you, and I'm saying it with love in my heart because I know that's where we all live. And I'm trying to get your attention today because God has a plan for us. God wants this church to move forward spiritually and exponentially. He wants you to move forward and closer to him. But he's, he's dying for a moment just to spend with you. And you've got to make some space for him. You won't drift into better health. And you won't drift into better spiritual health. I'm talking to somebody today. Verse 11 getting really quiet in here. I know that's how I know I got your attention. Y'all doing good today. I just want you to know that. I just want you to know y'all doing real good. I'm glad y'all showed up. Verse 11. Let them be ready for the third day. On the third day, the Lord will come down. Set aside time for the Lord. Now, corporately, we do this. We set aside rhythms, healthy rhythms. So we're going to have a seven-day prayer coming up. We do this. This is healthy corporately. But how many of you know it's more important that you get with God every day? Every day, spend some time with him. And healthy rhythms are great, but God is speaking direction to me. He's speaking vision to me. This is what God is calling us to do, to develop a healthy culture of worship and prayer and reading God's word. In fact, in February, I'm going to do a six-week sermon series. I don't think I've ever done this, but we're going to do a six-week sermon series on the Lord's prayer. The disciples said, teach us to pray. 
And here's what I have a conviction. I have a conviction that we don't know how to pray. The reason we want to pray, we want to spend time with God, but we, we say, Pastor, well, I'm not exactly sure how to pray. If the disciples needed to learn how to pray, and Jesus taught them how to pray, don't you think that it is important for us to know how to pray? I'm going to do that in February. We're going to have six weeks. We're going to start. It's going to coincide with our groups. That's why I want everybody to get in a group. We're going to talk about that in a minute. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but here's what I know. we got to pray. It's time to pray. God wants to spend time with you. The creator of the universe, the one that puts the stars in the sky, he wants to have communion with you. And that's why we're going to put a, a very strong emphasis in February. We'll start in February. And we're going to have spiritual growth. Verse 11, look at this. Let them be ready because I want to come down and I want to meet with them. Set aside some time to meet with them. Number two, listen to God. Listen to God. That's number two. Verse five. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the people. Now, my question to you today is this. How is it that today that we hear from God? How do we hear from God? His very words are written for us. His very words are written for us to know how to live, of principles in which how to guide our life. In fact, I asked you last week to start this reading plan. I told you last week that my, my reading plan this year, I'm going to read through chronologically, right? Well, uh, is there anybody here, you're reading through the Bible with me this year? Anybody here? Oh, well, look, look at the hands. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, if you haven't started yet, they're going to put a QR code uh, on the screen. Get your phone out. Hurry. If you want to, if you want to uh, read the word with me, along with me, in the Bible plan that I'm reading, I'm reading along chronologically, and it's not too late to begin. How many of y'all know if you, if, you, if, if you haven't been reading the Bible every day, you can start today? So you, how many of y'all know it would be really cool if y'all were reading along with me that at 5.30 in the morning, you, at 5.40 in the morning, because i got to make coffee first, and i got to pray for my wife. But at 5.40, I'm going to be praying in the morning, and you will be able to read right along with me the exact same things that I'm reading if you, if you scan that QR code. And you can just, now you don't have to pray at 5.40. <laughs> you don't have to read the word at 5.40. But well, here's what you can do. You can read when God gives you time and when you put it on your calendar. When you've made the priority for God and you say, God, I believe in this so much. I know I need to know your word. I can't obey a word I do not know. And so I'm going to put a priority on your word, put it on your calendar, and then stick by it. You will grow exponentially if you do that. Because when you hold this book, you're holding the very words of God. When you hold this book, there's principles. If you'll start to input these principles in your life, your life will be better. It may take a little time for some of, these, some of this, these principles to get down into your spirit, but when you hold this book and when you read this book, I want you to know when you start doing what you're reading, now your life is changing and you're taking spiritual steps. It's called transformation. Transformation begins, number one, point number one was what? Make a decision. Transformation happens when you make a decision, when you prepare yourself, when you set aside time to make room, to make space for God. When you do this, you will start transforming on the inside. Will I see outward transformation in you? Not immediately, not immediately, but as you start putting the principles in you, as you start growing inside, internally, a transformation is taking place, and it, it's not very long, people start to experience the transformation on the outside that is taking place on the inside, because you're starting to put the principles and the practices in your daily walk, and now you don't fly off the handle at your wife when you know you would have three weeks ago. Amen. Amen. I wasn't expecting, I, listen, I said this in the first service, I'll say it again. I wasn't expecting any Jericho marches today. I wasn't expecting any jumping up and down and amens and hallelujah pastors because this is where, this is, this is right, right what we need to hear right now. And it's not easy to do because you've got to make a decision and you've got to put action on it. Verse 5, now then if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant. In other words, if you... Hear my voice. If you hear from God, if you get into the word like never before, you can expect transformation. Uh, Romans 12, 2 says it like this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy 
acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you really want to see outward transformation in your life, it starts with your mind. You make a decision in your mind and you say, I'm going to get in the Word. And then you start putting the practices in your life. And then you start moving and being transformed and you'll change the way you think. When you change the way you think, now you'll start putting healthy practices in place. But you have to change the way you think, the transforming of your mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Transformation happens first. You make a decision. You set aside time. You prepare yourself. You hear from God. You read his word, and the transformation is now taking place. Moving your life forward is making a decision that says, I'm not satisfied with where I used to be. I'm not satisfied with, this, with me just living the same way I've been living. I know that God is inviting me to come near. And when I know that God is inviting me to come near, now I want to live the way he wants me to live rather than the way I want to live. All of us live our life according to somebody's script. You're living it either the way the enemy wants you to live or you're living it the way this script, this scripture says to live. For many of us, you're living your life the way culture tells you you should live. For some of us, you're living life and you say, well, this is just the way my family's been for years and generations. This is the way we live. This is just how we do it, Pastor. I know, I know it's not exactly by the word, but what you're doing is you're allowing your family to tell you how you should live rather than how God is telling you you should live. What script are you going to live by? Are you going to live by the culture script that's out today? Because I'm going to tell you something. If that's how you're going to live, you'll be live, living differently in, in the next year because it changes. Culture is changing all around us, but there's something that doesn't change. And it, if truth is truth, then it never changed. Truth is truth yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God's Word don't change. God's Word tells us how to live. Are you just going to listen to what the culture is telling you? Are you going to listen to your friend that doesn't have any thing going in their life spiritually? Are you going to let them place a script on you? Are you going to let the world tell you who you are? Are you going to let the world determine how you live your life or are you going to submit to the word of God? You see, the submitting to the word of God, it's only submission when you have to submit. When it's what you want to do, it's not submission. But when you read the word and it confronts you, and how you're living, and you start to change. What you're saying is, I, I, I know that I have a way, God, but I need to do it your way. Because the world's way changes every day. This is the truth of the Word of God. This is how we should be living. You may not like it, but I'm just telling you the truth today. I just know I've put these principles in place in my life, and when I drift, how many of you know what I'm talking about when I say drift? You say, Pastor, you drift? Of course. I'm human. I'm a man. I drift. You say, Pastor, I've never heard a pastor say that before. Well, they're all liars then. <laughs> if they've never just been honest with you, they're just lying. Look, we all drift. There's, there's a scripture that says we're all sinners. And we've all felt short of the glory of God. All of us drift. But today what I'm doing is I'm pulling us back in alignment with what the Word of God says. I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know that there's a script out there, and the world wants you to behave like the pagans. But no, we are a peculiar people. We should be standing out. We should not look like the world. We should respond differently. When there's a need in our brothers and our sisters, we should be responding to the need. When we see people who are being uh, discriminated against, we should be speaking to that, and we should not... We should not we should not be like the world because the, we are not called to be like the pagans. We're called to be people of God. And people of God respond differently than the, than the world because we stand up and we are royal priesthood. We put on our garments the same way, yes, but we put on a garment of praise. When things are not going good, we say, God, we praise you. We choose to pray you. It's praise you. It's a decision today. I'm choosing in the middle of the darkness, in the middle of my mess, in the middle of everything that's going on, God, I choose to praise you. It makes no sense. 
but it's what the Word of God is telling us to do. It's how we should live. And if you want to keep living the way you are, you'll be the same as you were at the end of 2023. But if you want to make a difference in this world, if you want to be different, if you want the River Valley to be transformed, it starts with one transformation after another. When the people of God submits to the Word and submits to the King, because there's only one King, and I'm not Him, and you're not Him. There's only one King, and we submit to His way. And that's when we bring His kingdom to this earth. Stand up with me across this house. I'm out of time. Is there anybody in this place, you'll give me one more minute while you're standing before I bless you and get you out. Is there anybody in the house that give me one minute? The last point is getting a group. You say, Pastor, what does this have to do with group? Verse 17, Mount, Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. They stood at the foot of the mountain. Moses took them out of the camp. Moses took them out of their comfort zone. Moses took them out of what they've always been doing to meet with God. They heard from God. They met with God. I have sent out at least 25 to 30 texts and some messages and some, uh, some emails. And I've, and I've called some of you. I'm asking you to be group leaders over this next session. We're going to teach people how to pray. You say, Pastor, I'll just be honest. I, I don't know why you text me. I'm not really a leader. I can't I can't really teach people the Bible. I'm not asking you to teach the Bible. I'm asking you to just have a conversation with people, to facilitate a conversation. You say, Pastor, I don't know if I can do this. Well, let me tell you something. I know that there's some people that maybe you can't do it right now, but how many of you know I'm going to train you? How many of you know I'm going to teach you how to do that? So if you will, if, you, if you're going to accept the call today, you say, Pastor, I want to help people learn how to pray. If that's it, I'm going to preach six sermons on it. I'm going to teach you what to do. I'm going to put some resources in your hand. And you, you, all you got to do is go to harvesttime.net forward slash events and say, I want to be a leader. And then you'll, you'll, you'll sign up for a group leader dinner. It's that simple. Get in a group or lead a group. I got to get out of my comfort zone. In order for me to grow, in order for me to do what God's calling me to do, I got to get out of my comfort zone. You've been an incredible crowd today. You came out in 10 degree weather, 12 degree weather to be here today. You are the Green Berets, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. I want to ask one question before we go. If you will, if you don't mind, just close your eyes. Just bow your heads for a moment in the presence of the Lord. I want to ask this question. You say, Pastor, everything that you said today, I, I agree with everything you said. I need to take a spiritual step in order for me to, I've got to take one step. I need to ask for forgiveness of my sins. I'm not living the way I need to right now, and I need to take a spiritual step that just gets me on the journey. I need to read the Bible, yes, and I, I, I need to do, I need to pray more, yes. I, I need to do those things, but I also, I need to take an elementary first step of just asking for forgiveness of my sins. And if that's you, can I see your hand right now? Just lift it up. I just want to see, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. To my right, to your left, I'm looking over here now. Just lift your hand. I wouldn't embarrass you for the world. Anybody on my right, your left, anybody else? There's been several hands here. I'm going to scan one more time in the presence of the Lord. I wouldn't embarrass you for the world. I just want to say a prayer, pr quick prayer with you. God bless you. You can put your hand down. I see you. Several more hands right there. This is why we do what we do. We're taking spiritual steps together. And church, can we pray together? I can't, I can't do your prayer. I can help you, though. And so we're just going to all repeat a prayer together. And if you mean this in your heart, you have forgiveness of your sins. And you've taken the first step, the first really important step to getting on a spiritual growth plan for your life. Are you ready? All across the house, all as brothers and sisters together. Can we say this prayer together? Say, Father God, I'm a sinner. I need to ask for forgiveness. I'm asking you now, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. I want to become a disciple. I want to follow you. I want to do what you want me to do. I'm tired of living like the world. Teach me how to live. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now listen, if you took that step of faith right there and you, you prayed that prayer, you believed it in your heart, I'm gonna invite our prayer team to come forward right now. 
and I'm going to just say a quick blessing over the whole house. And you say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer, but I would like someone else to pray with me right now. I just, I just have some further needs. Or maybe you have a bad report this week, and maybe you've got something going on in your life, and you just need some further prayer. These altars are open for prayer, and these, this is our team. They're trained to help you. They want to pray with you. There's no condemnation, and there's certainly no judgment. Why? Because all of us have drifted, because we're all sinners, because we all are in need of a Savior. Why? Because we all need help, and we all need prayer. We all need God to move in our lives. Amen? Amen. So can I bless you today? Father, thank you for blessing your people. Thank you, Lord, rising up and lying down along the way. I pray, God, that in the city and the field, your people are blessed. May we walk out of here. May we do what you're calling us to do. May we put a priority of spending time with you in your word and also on our knees. May we spend time with you. And I thank you, Father, that these people, Lord, they mean it. I ask you, God, to bless them, Lord, as they do what you're calling us all to do. Be blessed of the Lord. In Christ's name, I pray. I pray. Amen and amen. If you raise your hand or if you need prayer, you can come forward now. The rest of you, God bless you. I'll see you soon. See you next week. Don't miss next week. God bless you.